we're ready to go. So <laughs> let's just skip the preamble and jump right into it. Justin Karras leading that Urshifu and the Ogre Pond on his side of the field against Raging Bolt and Incineroar for Neil. Two, I mean, kind of standard leads. You might expect these are all very good Pokemon in this metagame. We have the potential for some follow me action coming out of that Ogre Pond, which could possibly protect that Urshifu from a Thunderclap right off the bat. When you're using this Scarf Urshifu, a lot of times you want to use it with that U-turn move to reposition, kind of pivot your Pokemon around. But one of the few Pokemon you have a really tough time doing that into is the Thunderclap Raging Bolt, which we do see coming out of Neil, Especially with that Photosynthesis boost from the Booster Energy, boosting that special attack even further, one Thunderclap will easily be enough to take out Urshifu given the chance. Not only that, Raging Bolt also has the option to go for additional boosts thanks to Calm Mind and can protect itself with Protect. This is not the Assault Vest variant that we've seen do so well previously in regulation f here comes justin's iron crown taking the field in place of that choice scarf or shifu will activate its own quark drive thanks to booster energy and get a special attack boost but there's no psychic terrain on the field yet it's kind of surprising to see this pokemon it does switch in a decent you know uh defensive switch there if a dragon pulse comes through won't take too much damage ivy cudgel or the move of choice into the neil's urshifu which switches in for the Incineroar while Raging Bolt goes for a Calm Mind right away. With Raging Bolt at plus two, essentially special attack, thanks to that booster energy boost, you do have to wonder if there is an Indeedy in the back of Justin's party to try and shut down those Thunderclaps and otherwise negate any priority moves on Neil's side of the field. This would be a great opportunity to try and switch it in. Here goes the Ogre Pond, and here comes the Indeedy. Well called, Gabby. Indeedy in the back, here to support the Iron Crown, block all our priority moves with the Psychic Terrain, and more importantly, boost the power and the reach of the expanding force coming out from Iron Crown. A double protect on Neil's side of the field to see how Justin would approach this turn. I'm curious what attacking move the Iron Crown went for here. It, Justin confirms it was expanding force, the attack of choice, which makes a lot of sense as it would have done super effective damage to the Urshifu and a good chunk of damage to that Raging Bolt, despite the Calm Mind. Yeah, this Calm Mind could prove problematic because even though the Iron Crown is set up very well with that booster energy, with the Psychic Terrain up, the boosted special defense on the Raging Bolt will allow it to take a couple attacks and not necessarily have the chance to swing at this Iron Crown right away, thanks to the possibility of a follow me coming out from Ndidi. Neil switching in the Rillaboom to remove the Psychic Terrain from the field as well. So now those expanding forces will no longer be a double targeting move. Indeedy though also will switch out for the Urshifu on Justin's side of the field. Exta expanding force single target into that Raging Bolt does a good amount of damage. Dragon pulls into that Scarf oh. Urshifu though is a one hit knockout. Big one-hit knockout there. Urshifu not known for having a great special defense stat, and thanks to the plus one special defense from Calm Mind and the Protosynthesis boost from the Booster Energy, a clean one-hit KO. However, I don't know that that's terrible for Justin because he does get this immediate swap back to Ndidi. A great Rillaboom switch in from Neil there to cancel out the Psychic Terrain, but now that you have Ndidi back on the field, Psychic Terrain goes right back up. No fake outs, no thunder claps, no grassy glides with priority on this turn, and Iron Crown does still have the chance to start throwing out some boosted expanding forces. Unfortunately for Justin, Neil can also very easily just swap out the Rillaboom and bring it back in to reset grassy terrain, so terrain control is gonna be a very important factor in this matchup. Yeah, but if you had to choose between losing your Ogre Pond Hearthflame and your Urshifu, I would think losing the Urshifu, staring down a Raging Bolt and a Rillaboom in particular, is the better trade for Justin. Mm -hmm. That all being said, the Rillaboom will leave the field for Neil, and indeed he sticks around with a helping hand for its partner, that Iron Crown. Ooh. Expanding Force does not affect Incineroar, but will get a boost from Terrain, will oh. connect with the Raging Bolt, but falls short of a knockout dragon pulse in return it's not very effective doesn't do a lot of damage but still raging bolt is on its final turns and a great play from justin there too and knowing that he might have the chance to get this huge expanding force off with this raging bolt being so bulky and having the plus one special defense boost you needed to find at least one time where you could go for that big expanding force neil had the option to protect that turn and possibly bring the incineroar in to re-swap the rollaboom back in on this coming turn and get rid of that psychic terrain but justin took great advantage of the fact that psychic terrain is still up 
He still has the chance to go for that big expanding force, and it pays off. The Dragon Pulse still doing under half to Iron Crown means it's still in a pretty strong position here. And considering the Incineroar actually does not carry Flare Blitz, Knockoff is the only move of option, and the item is already gone from the Iron Crown, so the Knockoff damage will not be boosted. Protect on the Iron Crown this turn means it won't be taking damage from the Dragon Pulse from that Raging Bolt. Indeed, he has access to one attacking move, and it is going to be enough to deal that little bit of damage to pick up the KO onto the Raging Bolt. Incineroar now tries oh, to go no. for a parting shot into the Protecting Iron Crown. Huge turn from Justin there. The, the Iron Raging Bolt is now just gone. Iron Crown protects itself from that parting shot as well, so it stays at the neutral special attack, and again, still boosted from that booster energy. Rillaboom does now come in, so you have the option for Fake Out because Psychic Terrain is gone. You have the option to pivot that Incineroar out and preserve another Fake Out for later on. And of course, you have the option to damage this Iron Crown now with a combination of Fake Out and Knock Off. But again, Gabby, the Indeedee is also still right there, so this Iron Crown has a lot of protection at its, at, its, uh, at its side. It does, but it can't necessarily go for expansion force at its full power because of the loss of the terrain. I think it still is the optimal attacking move for this Iron Crown, though, because you want to deal a ton of damage to that Rillaboom. Tachyon Cutter is not going to cut it, and you can't necessarily Terrastalize into a Water type for Terra Blast when you're staring down a Rillaboom. Especially because I think you really want to save your Terrastalization for this Ogre Pond in the back if you're Justin. That Fire type Ogre Pond with the attack boost now should be able to outspeed pretty much everything Neil has left and fire off some very powerful attacks. But we have no terrestrialization from the Ogre Pond. It will be this Iron Crown. It is a risky terrestrialization if Neil went for any Grass-type attacks into the now Water-type Iron Crown. But first, we also see Neil's terrestrialization. It's going to be the Ghost-type Incineroar to avoid the Terra Blast. That's a really cool matchup a quirk there because your Incineroar now is no longer as weak to the Terra Blast coming out from this Iron Crown. No helping hand though, Indeedee goes for Follow Me, making sure no damage will be dealt to the Iron Crown on this turn as it goes straight for that Terra Blast. You have to imagine that it was meant for the Incineroar as it is, and a smart terrestrialization from Neil there as we see it may have just been KO'd by that Terra Blast. Woodhammer from Ooh, that Rillaboom oh no. though with a critical hit as well is able to knock out the Indeedee in one hit. It. And now this poor Iron Crown is stuck on the field. It will have its special attack lowered thanks to the parting shot. And it's staring down a Rillaboom. This is not a good place for Justin to find himself. Yeah, rough critical hit there. I think one wood hammer, usually not enough to KO an Ndidi from full HP. And the parting shot would have been redirected into that slot. Importantly, keeping the Ndidi around and also keeping the Iron Crown special attack at neutral. It is a water type, so you are going to be resisting Surging Strikes, which is a nice little boon for this Iron Crown. But unfortunately, you are now weak to the grass type attacks coming out of this Rillaboom. Ogre Pond on Justin's side of the field is going to be his final Pokemon and does have access to its own Wood Hammer, which would do significant damage to the opposing Urshifu. But I think the bigger question for Justin is how do I power through the opposing Rillaboom? Rillaboom and this Incineroar in the back. The nice thing for Justin about the Incineroar terrestrializing is that now it no longer resists the attacks coming out of his own Ogre Pond. So you are going to have the chance to swing at it with something like a wood hammer that is boosted by this grassy terrain now, notably. And of course, the Ivy Cudgels with that boosted critical hit rate. I do think Justin still has a way into this game because expanding force, even without the terrain boost, even at minus one special attack, will do a lot of damage to this fighting type Urshifu. Incineroar taking the field for the Rillaboom, going to bring with it that Intimidate to lower the Ogre Pond's attack by one stage. Whether or not this will make a, a deal with this turn, we will have to see as our Shifu locks in Protect. Iron Crown goes for a Protect as well. So it's just this Ogre Pond that will be attacking this turn. Ivy Cudgel into the Incineroar. Oh. Does not get the critical hit and does fall short of the knockout. Knockout not coming through is huge for Neil because now he has the option to go straight for a fake out with this Incineroar. Make sure that either the Iron Crown or the Ogre Pond is not able to fire off an attack on this coming turn, which will be very great for the Urshifu. You get the Intimidate off as well, which will mitigate damage coming out from this Ogre Pond, which is now at minus one attack. Cannot Terrastalize to get that Embody Aspect boost. And now you have a chance at possibly surviving something like a Wood Hammer in this grassy terrain with your own Urshifu. Justin is in a tough spot indeed, and 
even if you wanted to try and spiky shield this turn so that you wouldn't flinch from the fake out, you do have to remember that Urshifu's unseen fist ability allows it to attack through any protecting moves. We see that spiky shield from Ogre Pond, though, which means it will not Ooh. flinch this turn. Fake out going into that protecting Pokemon. The Incineroar going to take a little bit of damage in recoil. The big question here, though, is who did her Shifu target down? It is that Ogre Pond. It takes one hit. It takes two hits. Oh, that's going to be so Will close. it be able to hold on through a third? Oh. It is just barely able to hold on. Iron Crown now expanding force into that Urshifu, oh. also falling short of the KO. The combination of losing Psychic Terrain and the Parting Shot, just barely enough to keep Urshifu around. That is a game ceiling turn for Neil. The Pokemon advantage is too high, and this Ogre Pond has no access to priority moves that could possibly save it from an Aqua Jet coming out from the Urshifu on Neil's end. Aqua Jet taking down Ogre Pond will mean that the Iron Crown is left all alone, and it can possibly even just get parting shotted again on this turn to get that special attack down even further. Of course, the Rillaboom remaining in the back for Neil has those super effective grass type moves, so it looks like Neil has set him up set himself up very nicely to take this first game. Aqua Jet connects for the knockout, and just like you said, Jake, it looks like Neil will win this game number one. We do get to see how much damage Tachyon <laughs> Cutter does to the Urshifu, which could come in handy in future sets. Uh, but for now, with the Urshifu gone and with, I believe, a knockoff coming through on this Incineroar, there will probably be one more turn with the Rillaboom on the field until we can officially wrap this game up and start <laughs> talking about game number two. Of course, the Rillaboom does have to come back in and seal this game up, but it is nothing more than a formality at this point. Barring some, some crazy critical hits here, I don't think that there's much of a chance for this Iron Crown to take you know, this Rillaboom and Incineroar on, on its own. Unfortunately, it does not have the Psychic Terrain and Indeedy next to it, it so desperately loves to see. Protect coming out this turn, trying to stall out one final turn of Grassy Terrain and dodge a possible fake out. So Justin doing all he can, giving himself some more time to think about game two as well here. Yeah, I was just looking at the Iron Crown in particular and trying to figure out like if he gets the critical hit, is there enough damage on that Rillaboom for Expanding Force to be a KO? Knowing that the Rillaboom is holding an Assault Vest and knowing that the Incineroar would still be free to attack for multiple turns as well, I do think it's just a matter of time here. But if we can see how much damage a attack does into Rillaboom, the attack of choice being Tachyon Cutter here, that is good information for Justin. And I think he is trying to take as much information as he can forward in game number two, knowing just how much is on the line. And of course, a smart choice for Justin there not to forfeit, just to see how much damage those Tachyon Cutters do into that Rillaboom. But Neil is the one who takes this first game, puts himself one step closer to a finals appearance at the Orlando Regional Championships. I think a very well-played set from, or for a well game, well-played game from Neil in that first game. For sure, relying on that Firewater Grass core between the Rillaboom, the Incineroar, and the Urshifu Rapid Strike to put a lot of pressure down onto the board against Justin, ensuring that the terrain never really stuck around as the Iron Crown really relies on that psychic terrain in order to unlock its full potential. The early knockout on that Urshifu as well was just huge as that Pokemon with its Choice Scarf really would have given Justin a bit more maneuverability and a bit more of a threat against the Incineroar in particular. I think the terrain control is going to be very important for both of these trainers in this match. We saw in game one, Neil was able to keep the grassy terrain up much more often than Justin had psychic terrain up, and that was a big difference maker, because if the Iron Crown had another one or two more turns of firing off those boosted spread expanding forces, that could have been the difference that he needed to take that game. But I think Justin losing that Urshifu to the Dragon Pulse switch in very early on made his switch options much more readable, much more unsafe, much more difficult to do without getting punished, because we only have three Pokemon left. If you switch one out, your opponent knows what it's going to be, especially when you've revealed all four of them, of course. So knowing that, Neil has plays he can make where, okay, I know only Ogre Pond can be in the back. If Justin does swap out this Ndidi to try and get his terrain back up, but in this case, we're going to see the Raging Bolt right off the bat again, except differently for Justin. Yeah, Justin going with the Ogre Pond and the Urshifu on his side of the field. They both will be affected by the Intimidate from Neil's own Incineroar, but this is a much more offensive start to the game. 
That being said, though, you still have the Urshifu locked in against the Raging Bolt. You have to wonder if there is going to be an early switch to set up Psychic Terrain here, which could be really dangerous for Justin. It could. You really have to do something to protect this Urshifu from Thunderclap. Of course, we did not see Neil go for it right off the bat in game one, but that is a really scary option he has here because if you do get the chance to Thunderclap a Water-type Urshifu, it just gets knocked out in one hit, especially with that Protosynthesis booster energy boost. So Justin has to be very careful when he opts to attack with his Urshifu, but no swaps yet. No swaps oh, yet, and the blue. Thunderclap able oh, to get no. an early knockout on her Shifu. Once again, Justin starting the game off on the back foot, possibly looking to rely on Follow Me from the Ogre Pond there to maybe try and open something up. But given that the Ogre Pond moves after the Thunderclap went through, I don't know what Justin's game plan was there. That was a massive gambit from Neil and probably a play you make knowing I'm up one game already. If I get this right, I'm in such a strong position in this game too and I put myself even closer to the finals. If Justin swaps the Ndidi in, if he swaps the Urshifu out for anything, that play goes horribly wrong because you're getting no damage out with the two priority moves you selected on that turn, both of which would have been blocked by Psychic Terrain, but Neil reads straight through that, takes a bit of a risky play and it pays off hugely right on turn one. Incineroar switching out on the field for Rillaboom, which is a great Pokemon to take the field opposite the Iron Crown. Also will take the opportunity to set up the grassy terrain. Iron Crown going for a protect this turn, not wanting to take any damage, but Ooh. Ogre Pond, Ivy Cudgel into that Rillaboom. Okay. It does fall short of a KO, but that Rillaboom is it definitely within knockout range from an attack from Iron Crown now. Nice play from Justin there. I think he was trying to read Neil, reading his swap from Ogre Pond into Ndidi, and just based on how the speeds work, if Ogre Pond swapped out to Ndidi first, it would switch because switch first before the Incineroar because of the, the speed order. So Incineroar would have swapped out to Rillaboom after the Ndidi switches in, which would have had Grassy Terrain up. Justin, knowing that, goes for the Ivy Cudgel into that slot because keeping the Grassy Terrain up is a big priority for Neil here, and trying to get any damage onto that Rillaboom that you can early on is really important. Now Justin has a much safer swap, you know, into a possible Ndidi on this turn if he wants, which could possibly give you the benefit of that spread damage expanding force, but it doesn't look like we're seeing that just yet. Incineroar certainly would be happy to take that expanding force as well, given that it's currently still a dark type Pokemon, but no switches, a second Ivy Cudgel into that Incineroar. It's not very effective, but it does get the critical hit for a little bit of extra damage <laughs> and Terra Blast. Right. There's no terrestrialization just yet, but still does enough to bring that Incineroar down into the yellow. Dragon Pulse will knock out the Ogre Pond, and now Justin is in a very precarious position two Pokemon remaining for him, all four Pokemon remaining for Neil, and Neil at any point in time can switch in his Rillaboom to remove this critical psychic terrain. Exactly, once Rillaboom comes in, there is no more psychic terrain for the rest of this game, which will be a really big deal for Justin because no longer will he have the chance to go for those boosted expanding forces, no longer will he have the chance to get the spread expanding force as well because that terrain is up. Incineroar switches out, Rillaboom comes in, Psychic Terrain is now gone. It is Justin's Indeedee and Iron Crown versus the world, and Rillaboom has just set up the Grassy Surge. Iron Crown can still go for some decent damage here, but we actually see Justin go for a Terrastalization onto the Indeedee this time around, becoming a Fairy-type Pokemon, which, if the Raging Bolt locked into Dragon Pulse for this turn means that it will not take any damage. <laughs> no redirection. Terror Blast is, is enough to pick up the KO <laughs> on to that Rillaboom. And Didi now free to go for an attack as it's not going to take damage from the Dragon Pulse that did target down that slot. Terra Fairy boosted Dazzling Gleam single target into that Raging Bolt does more damage than you think. I'm loving these normal type Terra Blasts. They're actually a bit of a big deal for Justin here. That neutral damage into Incineroar paying off and of course getting the KO on that Rillaboom without having to worry about the resisted or immune damage from expanding force or Tachyon Cutter. 
the Terra Fairy and Dee Dee now presents a pretty big problem for Raging Bolt. It's kind of the same principle as with Clefairy, like we heard Stefan talk about earlier on in this tournament. But now if Ndidi goes for Follow Me, Thunderclap will fail and Dragon Pulse will do zero damage. So unless this Ndidi can get knocked out by the Ogre Pond on Neil's side of the field, Raging Bolt cannot do anything right now. And it does also make me wonder what move would do the most damage to this Ogre Pond who does take this opportunity to terrestrialize and get the attack boost from the Embody aspect, which I think it's going to need if it wants to try and take this Indeedee out in one or two hits. It really does. Helping Hand comes through here. No follow me because Justin knows this Raging Bolt can't do much damage anyway. Ivy Cudgel comes straight through from Neil's plus one attack Ogre Pond into the Indeedee on Justin's side of the field for a huge one hit KO with Ivy Cudgel. With Ndidi gone, it is just the Iron Crown remaining for Justin. Will have the opportunity to go for Expanding Force this turn, oh. and it actually falls short of a KO onto the Ogre Pond without the Psychic Terrain. It might be too little too late though, as now without the threat of redirection anymore, this Iron Crown can be hit by Dragon Pulses, it can be hit by Thunderclaps, and Neil is now moving on to face Wolf Glick in the finals here of the Orlando Regional Championships.